I'm Dr. Flanagan. I'm the clinical lead for the Prostate Cancer Supportive Care Program, Sexual Rehabilitation Clinic. And I work as a urologist at the Vancouver General Hospital within the University of British Columbia. I have a specialized practice in sexual medicine and, and reproductive medicine and surgery. We'll be talking to you today about vacuum erection devices and how can they be used to assist in erectile dysfunction. So what is a vacuum erection device, a VED? It's a device that applies a vacuum pressure to pull blood into the penile tissues, causing the smooth muscle to relax, blood flow to come in, and the penis will expand both in length and width to create an erection. Now, why would we use uh, such a device? Well, there's two reasons. One, you can use it for penile rehabilitation, or two, prior to sexual activity if you want to achieve an erection that uh, can be used. Now, when we're talking about use of the vacuum device with penile rehabilitation, we know that early use after prostatectomy may help preserve penile length and girth, and it may also assist in earlier return to sexual function after prostatectomy. It may also allow for an earlier return of natural erections following prostatectomy. More research is needed, but certainly there appears to be a signal in the literature. It can also be used in combination with drug-based therapies for improving erectile function. Now, when we want to use a vacuum therapy device for sexual activity, uh, it can be used alone or in combination with medication therapies such as PDE5 inhibitor pills, such as Viagra, Cialis, Levitra, etc. When used for sexual activity, a uh, tension band um, is often required to help maintain the erection. So here, the blood is drawn into the penis with the negative pressure in the cylinder, and then the band is slipped from the cylinder to the base of the penis, which essentially traps the blood in to maintain uh, the rigidity of the penile shaft. If you have a partner, you can include them in the conversation and the decision to use a VED, and you can also um, have them involved in the process of applying the device, or you can do it yourself, whatever works better for you and your partner. With anything, there are certainly pros to this form of treatment, and there are cons to it as well. Some of the positives to using a vacuum therapy device there is the initial upfront cost of ordering the device. However, once you have it, there's not additional costs and it's very cost effective. You don't have to use medications uh, with the device, so certainly you won't have any potential side effects uh, or complications from uh, any pharmacological agents. It can be used in combination with medications if desired, um, oral medications or even penile injection therapy. Another good thing about it, especially after prostate cancer treatment, is you don't need functioning erectile nerves for it to work. Typically we get an erection, the signal is sent uh, through the nerves in the pelvis that go around the prostate and signal for the penis to create an erection. If these nerves are compromised, the signal can't get to the base of the penis. However, with a vacuum device, you're bypassing that. Uh, it's strictly working on the end organ, that being the penis, and drawing the blood into it to expand it both in length and width and achieve the rigidity that's needed. It can also help with spontaneity. Once you get the hang of it uh, and you have the process down pat, uh, it only takes a couple minutes to actually operate the device and achieve the erection uh, ready for use. Some of the downsides to using vacuum therapy. Some men find that the erections appear darker in color and a little bit cooler to touch, mainly because it's bringing in more venous blood uh, compared to a natural erection that brings in arterial blood, uh, which may be a little bit brighter, red or pink, uh, and slightly warmer uh, as there's continuous circulation. To use the vacuum device effectively, uh, it does take some practice and you need some level of dexterity uh, to have the device function properly. Uh, but it can take some time to learn this. There's something called a hinge effect where um, the penis may hinge uh, where it goes into the base of the body. So essentially, when you're achieving an erection with a vacuum device, blood's being drawn into the shaft of the penis that you see. This uh, increases in size as well as rigidity. When you place the band on the very base as the penis enters your body, 
that section is rigid. However, the section going into your body is not rigid and it's softer. So there is some movement at the very base of the penis and takes a little bit of adjustment uh, to find the hang of it and uh, be functional with this. Initially, it can be a little bit uncomfortable getting the hang of it and using the device, uh, but with a little bit of time, it becomes more natural and more comfortable for most men. Now, there are certain scenarios where vacuum therapy device might not be uh, the best idea. Uh, it's certainly not recommended if you have a history of spontaneous prolonged erections lasting longer than four hours. We call this priapism and certainly something that you'd want to talk to your prescribing physician or clinician about first. Similarly, if you bruise easily or you have a bleeding disorder, uh, then certainly you could be at risk of having uh, a hematoma or collection of blood or additional bruising. So we'd also recommend that in this circumstance so that you talk to your prescribing physician or clinician. Finally, if you have a penile implant, uh, it will not likely aid in gaining an erection in the shaft. Uh, it may uh, cause some swelling of the, the head of the penis, but again, something to consult your prescribing clinician about. And certainly, uh, you should speak to your doctor uh, if you are on a blood thinning medication. If you don't have any sensation uh, to pain at the base of your penis, uh, this is important uh, to ensure that you're not injuring yourself in the process. Um, it's uh, important to have these natural cues or at least a process in place to ensure that you're not damaging anything on your body. Uh, finally, if you have a curve to the penis uh, that you weren't born with, called Pyrone's disease. Um, it's not absolutely contraindicated. However, if you have a significant curve, uh, the vacuum therapy could induce this curve and there may not be enough space within the shaft or the cylinder of the device to accommodate it and could re result in discomfort. So how do we use a vacuum therapy device for penile rehabilitation? Well, we recommend that you use it at least three times a week to simulate uh, the expansion of the muscle, blood flow going into the penis, and exercising that muscle. This can be done in uh, similar to exercise sessions. So for 15 minutes, you apply the device uh, used to create the erection, and you hold it for three minutes. Press the release button, and then repeat this two to five more times. With respect to the actual steps in applying the device and using it, you can certainly ask one of the prostate cancer supportive care sexual health clinicians to guide you through this process, or you can click on the video link uh, presented on this slide, uh, which has a very nice instructional video uh, by an individual that has a lot of experience with these devices. So where can you get a vacuum therapy device? Well, you can purchase them from medical companies, and we do recommend that you purchase it from a medical company as they have uh, pressure release valves to keep you safe. And ultimately, we want an effective therapy, but we also want to keep you safe at the same time. We have a website listed here for a device that we just have a lot of experience with, so feel free to uh, look at this link. Your prostate cancer supportive care clinician can also provide you with a letter that can get signed by your physician. You can then submit this, med this letter to your extended medical coverage uh, company to see if they will cover some of the costs associated with this device. The device can also be claimed as a medical expense for your information. Just want to take this opportunity to thank all of our supporters for the Prostate Cancer Supportive Care Program. The Specialist Services Committee provided funding to help us initiate this program in January of 2013. And more recently, the Ministry of Health has provided funding in 2017 that allowed for the provincial expansion of our program uh, to reach more British Columbians uh, with sexual dysfunction and survivorship issues following prostate cancer. I would also like to acknowledge all of the other agencies that have supported our program throughout the years, as well as the individuals and families that have provided generous philanthropic support. If you'd like to look more into our program or connect with us, here are our contact details, uh, including our uh, email, website, 
Twitter and Facebook programs. Thank you.